Okay, well, in this session, we're going to get some further practice clapping rhythms in compound time, partly because I think it's good to come back to reading rhythms in the light of other ways of exploring the topic of compound time. So we've done a bit of oral work, we've done some conducting stuff, we've had to think about duplets and things. So now we'll come back to the rhythms and just see if we can build confidence in compound time. But this time you've probably already noticed I've included duplets in the rhythms and I've included them writing them both ways. So you might notice in rhythm A, here's a duplet written with the two. In rhythm B, well, we've got it written with the two there. In rhythm C, I've got a duplet here written as sort of note values and another one there. So you can see we've got a bit of a mixture. Um, D, we've got them written as duplets, but notice these duplets have got the brackets on them uh, because these notes are not beamed together. And when we come to rhythm E, I've got these notated as rhythms as dotted notes. So just so we get used to reading duplets in both those ways. Okay, well, let's get pitched into rhythm A. Let's see what we're dealing with here. It's more practice in 6-8. So what's happening in this first rhythm? Well, we've got one, two, three, and then four, five, six on that fourth note. So the first bar, the first measure is very easy, isn't it, really? One, two, three, four, five, six. That's all sitting very comfortably, isn't it? The second measure, the second bar, well, slightly more complicated, but what's happening here, the first note comes on one, the dot is two, then this is an and, then this is three, this is an and. The next note starts on four, lasts four, five, and the last note comes on six. Okay, now we meet the duplet. This is where this breaking down the bar, the measure into six is slightly more awkward, isn't it? Because this is gonna come on one, I'm gonna have two just before the second note and I'm gonna have three just after it. So it's that duplet thing that's not so comfortable when you're counting three. One, two, three, that's how it works. Okay, well, then we carry on, that's four, that's on five, that's on six. And in the last bar, the last measure, I'm going one and two, three, and then the last note's going four, five, six. So if we're gonna count this in six, well, that should be okay, but the duplet is just going to be very slightly awkward when we count it in six. And now we're going to learn with the duplets that it's much easier if we can count it in two. But we're still at a point where we might be making that transition to counting those two beats, but needing to think in six a little bit as well. So let's have a look at rhythm A and see if we can clap the rhythm and we'll count it in six. So here's six for nothing. One, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, one, three, and four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five, six. One, and two, three, four, five, six. Now, I wonder how that went for you. I wonder if that duplet just caused a little bit of grief. It possibly did. But do you see what I'm doing with that duplet? One, two, three. It's kind of going one, two, and three, isn't it? One, two, and three. Do you see, it sort of fits in a bit like that, doesn't it? Okay, let's try rhythm A again, counting in six. One, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, and three, and four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five, six. One, and two, three, four, five, six. So I hope as we're doing this, you're getting a little bit of a feel for dinning with those duplets and just getting a bit more comfortable with that. Okay, let's do that again. And this time we'll cut out the ands, see if we can just count the six quavers or the six eighth notes. One, two, three, four, five, six. 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 
Okay, hoping you're beginning to make that transition from having to count all the ands and being a bit more confident about not having to count the ands. All right, let's see if we can now go to two beats and a bar. Let's see what's happening. That's beat one, that's beat two. That's beat one, remember looking for the beaming to help you. Here's beat two. This, of course, this duplet is all a beat one, isn't it? And this is beat two. Again, the beaming, very helpful in that particular bar or measure. Then there's the beaming flagging up beat one, and here is beat two. So let's see if we can count this in two. Okay, so here's a bar of nothing. One, two. One, two. One, two. One, two. One, two. Okay, just getting a feel for, oh yeah, how does the triplet feel there? See, you don't have this funny thing about going one, two, three, and trying to get that in there. You just think one, two. But you're having to divide the first beat of this particular bar, this measure, into two equal parts. The second half of that measure, that bar, you're dividing into three equal parts. So one thing you can do is just kind of think, can I alternate those divisions into two and three? So one, ba, ba, ba. So we just get used to alternating twos and threes, just get a kind of feel for it. Because at one level, it's good to calculate. At another level, it's good just to kind of feel it, isn't it? Then so much of feeling is true of what we're doing musically. So we're trying to bring some rigor to the way we're calculating this, but also just kind of thinking, can we actually experience what it feels like to shift between the duplets and the divisions into three? Okay, well, repeat that rhythm as many times as you want to, putting the ands in, taking the ands out, trying to count two instead of six. You know, do what you need to do to get as comfortable as you can with that. But for now, let's move on to rhythm B. 12, 16. So what are we talking about here? We're talking about a compound quadruple time signature. There are 12 semiquavers or 12 sixteenths notes in each bar or each measure. And because it's a compound quadruple, there are four beats. Now again, because we've got these much shorter notes, the beaming is of great help to us. Just look at the beaming. Before you even do any maths with this, can you see the beaming is saying, here's beat one, beat two, beat three, beat four. Beat one, beat two, beat three, beat four. The beaming is such a useful kind of visual thing, isn't it? So lots of people in the world are not very convinced about beaming. They just think, oh, why do we need to bother with all this nonsense? Actually, it's really helpful to us, isn't it? Let's see what's happening then. So this time we're counting 16th notes or semiquavers. So we've got one, two, three, one note on each of those. This one starts on four. We're staying there for five because it's a quaver or an eighth note. So that's two sixteenths notes, two semiquavers. Then the next note comes on six. Now here comes a duplet. So it's seven, eight, doing nine. So it's one of those, the first one comes on seven. The second one comes between eight and nine, doesn't it? And then this one starts on 10 and we stay there for 11 and 12. Then in the next bar, the next measure, we start on one, we put two on the dot. Now we've got a demi semi quaver or 30 second notes, so that's an and, there's three, okay? Then we've got four, five, six, one sixteenth note, one semi quaver on each of those counts. Then we've got a duplet, so seven, eight, doing nine, <laughs> see how that works. And then the last one, 10, 11, 12. So let's see if we can clap the rhythm for B, counting 12 and dealing with a couple of tuplets. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. One, two, and three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve.
Okay, beginning to get a feel for these duplets. <laughs> Tricky things, aren't they? Let's have another go. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. One, two, one, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. Okay, well, let's see if we can now go straight into counting those four beats. So remember where we located them? One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Let's see if we can actually just count four beats in each bar, each measure. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Okay, in many ways the duplets are easier there, aren't they, doing it that way. Okay, is that working for you? Let's try it once again. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Okay, great stuff. Well, as always, replay as many times as you need to. For now, we're going to move on to rhythm C in 9-8. Again, I wonder if you can just look at the beaming and see visually where the beats are. Beat one, beat two, beat three. Beat one, beat two with the written out duplets. Beat three, beat one, beat two, written out duplets. Beat three. So the beaming is such a big clue there, isn't it? So nine eighths, we've got nine quavers or nine eighth notes in each bar, in each measure. And we're going one, two, and three. Then this starts on four, last for five. This comes on six. This starts on seven, we hold for eight. Then this is the and after eight. This is nine. Then this note starts on one, lasts for two and three. Here comes a duplet. It starts on four, we put five in, then it comes in between five and six. This note comes on seven, lasts for eight. The last note comes on nine. And in the final bar, we've got this note on one, and then there's an and, two, three. Here come the duplets. So the first one's on four. Then we have five. This comes between five and six. Then we have this one starting on seven, eight, nine. Okay. Well, let's see what happens if we clap rhythm C, counting nine in each bar, each measure. Okay. One, two, three, four. Five, six, seven, eight, nine. One, two, and three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and nine. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. One and two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Okay getting a bit more confident with these duplets now and beginning to realize that, oh, actually, yeah, this is a duplet, even though it hasn't got a two sitting there, as is that. Let's do that one again straight away. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. One, two, one, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and nine. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, Nine. One and two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Okay, well, let's break it down and look for these three beats in each bar, each measure. One, two, three. One, two, three. One, two, three. Okay, here's a bar for nothing. See if you can clap with me now. One, two, three. One, two, three.
three, one, two, three, one, two, three. So again, it's feeling those duplets, isn't it? There's dividing those beats into two. It's much harder than it seems because you get used to the beats dividing into three, even if you're kind of feeling those rather than calculating them. And then when you have to kind of feel the beat dividing into two, you think, oh, where does that second note come? That just takes a little bit of getting used to, but well worth making friends with it. So these duplets don't catch you up. Marvellous. Let's go on. Rhythm D is in 6-4. So what are we talking about? We're talking about a compound duple time. 6-4, six, six crotchets in each bar, each bar or six quarter notes in each measure. Okay. Harder to see the beaming giving us the beats because we've got longer notes. But can you see beat one, beat two with a duplet? Beat one, beat two, beat one, beat two with a duplet, beat one, beat two, because we've got dotted minim beats, haven't we? Or dotted half note beats. You can see where these are all coming. So that's where the beats go. But let's start by counting six. So we're counting quarter notes or crotchets. So this starts on one, we hold it for two, the next note's on three, the next note's on four. Okay, now then, what are we doing here? We're going to go five. This is going to come between five and six. Then we're going to go one and two, three. Then this note's coming on four, we're holding on for five and six. Then in the next bar, the next measure, we're placing that on one, placing the next note on two, the next note on the and. Then we've got three on the next note, the next note, the start of the duplet on four. Then we count five, stick the second note of the duplet between five and six. Then in the last measure, the last bar, we start on one, hold for two, move on three. Then we've got an and. And then the last note starts on four and we hold it for five and six. So let's have a go at clapping rhythm D, counting six in each bar, each measure. One, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five, six. One and two, three, four, five, six. One, two and three, Four, five, six, one, two, three, and four, five, six. Let's do it again straight away. One, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five, six. One, and two, three, four, five, six. One, two, and three, four, five, six. One, two, three, and four, five, six. Brilliant. Now, let's see if we can count it in two. Remembering that we've got these dotted minim beats or dotted half note beats looking like that. Okay, here we go. One, two. One, two. One, two. One, two. One, two. Okay, so again, we're just trying to wean ourselves from counting six to counting two. So keep going with that journey, it's well worth pursuing. And this is one of the great things about this kind of course, you know, as I keep saying, you can rewind, you can redo this as many times as you like until you get really proficient at it. And the great thing is to register the rhythms that you're reading in these different time signatures because you'll meet them over and over again. You won't meet duplets that often. So if the duplets are defeating you, don't lose any sleep over it, um, but you know, they do come up every now and again. We might as well be ready for them when they do. Lastly, rhythm E is in 12-8. Can we begin to see what's going on? Do we notice duplets there? Duplets there. Okay, can we see what the beaming is telling us? Beat one, beat two, beat three, beat four, 
beat one, beat two, beat three, beat four. Now this is interesting, it's taking up beats one and two, isn't it? Then there's beat three, there's beat four. So we've got one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. In terms of the 12, well, what have we got? One, two, and three. Then this is on four, hold for five. Next note's on six. Here's the first of the duplets, on seven. Count eight, stick it between eight and nine, the second note of the duplet. The last note starts on 10, holds for 11 and 12. The next measure, the next bar. Okay, we're counting quavers, the eighth note. So we've got 16th note, semi-quavers, we need an and. So one and, two, three. Next note starts four, lasts for five and six. Then we've got a duplet. So seven, eight, put the second note in between eight and nine. Then the last note starts on 10, lasts for 11 and 12. Then the first note of this last bar is going to go one, two, three, four, five, six. Because you see it's a dotted minim, a dotted half note. So that's going to be six of the quavers of the, of the eighth notes. So it's half the bar, isn't it? Then this comes on seven, hold for eight. Next note on nine. Last note starts ten, holds on for eleven and twelve. So let's see if we can clap rhythm E counting those 12 components of the bar. So here goes. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12. One, two, one, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12. One and two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12. And again, straight away. Or one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12. One, two, one, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12. One and two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. Brilliant. Let's go straight into counting the four beats of the bar. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Okay, I'll count four for nothing. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two. Three, four. It's funny, isn't it? Sometimes the most complex rhythms can catch us out, or the duplets. Actually, sometimes it's long notes that catch us out. The number of times you hear people come to long notes and they just short change them. They think, oh, I've been here long enough, I'll move on now. But keep counting through those long notes and then you've got it. Okay, let's just do that one more time, counting those four beats in each bar, each measure. One, Two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. So I hope that's given you more useful practice, clapping rhythms in compound time, this time including duplets as well. And that as we're going through this, we're getting much more proficient at dealing with six, nine, and 12 as upper numbers, but also being able to switch between eight, 16, and four as the lower numbers. So even though we spent quite a bit of time on compound time, 
I think it's a good high priority because even people who are happy dealing with rhythms in simple time often struggle in compound times. I hope this is giving you real confidence in dealing with compound time.